This is not even my final form. Welcome to the Swain Ultimate Guide. This guide contains everything you need. Tips, tricks, combos, power spikes, and even gameplay examples to achieve your goal this season with Swain. Whether you're a newer player aiming to get out of Iron 4 or grinding to get Diamond for the first time. After testing plenty of items and runes from the best pro and solo queue players, I've put as much information in this guide to help you emulate their builds and gameplay. I'm Zeus, let's get straight into this guide and I'll show you how to dominate with the new reworked Swain, the visionary ruler of Noxus. Let's quickly cover his abilities, then after each one, I'll show you tips and tricks you can use right now in your next game to gain an advantage. His passive, Ravenous Flock, leaves behind soul fragments after enemy champions have died. Your ravens will automatically pick up nearby souls. These souls will heal you for around 5-9% to maximum HP and grant you 12 HP permanently. These souls will make Swain naturally tanky throughout the game, making him a pretty good scaling champion. We'll be able to pick up more souls from his W and E abilities, which I'll cover soon. His Q, Death's Hand, unleashes 5 bolts in front of him, dealing AoE damage to all enemies. What's cool about this ability is the potential to hit a single champion with multiple bolts. Get up close to deal optimal damage kind of like a mini shotgun. It will be your main tool to wave clear with the amazing AoE, low cooldown and decent mana cost, as well as poke melee champions. His W, Vision of Empire, summons a demonic eye. It will grant vision of the area for 2 seconds and then explode after 1.5 seconds, dealing magic damage to all enemies and then slowing them for 2.5 seconds. Enemy champion's hit will be revealed for 4 to 8 seconds and you'll collect a soul fragment from every champion hit. This is one of the longest ranges in the game. Be on the lookout to assist your teammates or even snipe low HP enemies from across the map. This ability alone is quite hard to land as most players can simply walk out of it, so try to time it during specific events. Use it to block fleeing enemies' paths. They'll either have to walk backwards into your team or run through it, causing them to take damage and be slowed. Aim for areas that are tight and narrow, especially in the jungle and river, or even between towers and walls. When enemies are using abilities that have charged up or long cast times, like Xerath's Q or Scion's Q, they'll either have to rush their abilities or risk taking the hit from W. If enemies are already CC'd, you'll have a much easier time to land this. Make a quick mental list of your ally CC abilities when the game starts so you're ready to follow up. While enemies are recalling. This one's great because even if you don't hit them, they'll still have to walk out of the range and therefore cancel their recall. This could be game changing during the early laning phase. The vision is amazing to check for objectives like Dragon and Baron. Even catch out the enemy jungler taking buffs, helping your team reveal their location and you might even get some free gold and a buff. Think of it like a free Farsight Alteration, the Blue Trinket Ward, except it does damage and has a much lower cooldown. Use it to check brushes against enemy threats. Although Q will be your main wave clear, the AoE from W makes it great nonetheless, however, make sure you have a lot of mana or you're about to base. Look for minions when you're far away, that are about to die, so you can pick up some gold and XP we'll be using our next ability to increase our chances to land W. His E, Nevermore, throws out a demonic hand, damaging enemies it passes through. Once it reaches its max range, it will then return to Swain, damaging and then rooting the first bunch of enemies it hits. If you've hit enemy champions, you can then recast this ability, pulling enemies towards you, and you'll even rip a soul fragment out of them. If there's one ability you want to focus on, this is the most important skill shot to master on Swain. I'll cover the most effective ways in combos, but let's go through some tips and tricks now. This is your main medium to long range poke tool in lane. Landing this means you can follow up with all your other abilities. Once you land E, throw out your W in front of the enemy, 
and recast E to have them as close to the center as possible. This gives enemies the least amount of chance to escape before they take damage from W. Landing E and W will give you two soul fragments. You definitely don't want to E pull them out of your W range. Since recasting pulls them closer to Swain, it has great synergy with his Q, as now they'll take even more bolts to the face for a possible maximum of 5 bolts. Throw E diagonally in lane, aiming for the max range to catch enemies off guard. Most enemies will try to sidestep it. However, if you position yourself on the side of a minion wave and throw it out at an angle, instead of just straight ahead, it has a great chance to deceive them and they're not always able to react to the trajectory. This is another great wave clear tool for Swain, just make sure you're high on mana or about to base. Against spell shielded enemy abilities, for example Sivir's W or items like Banshee's Veil or Edge of Night, you can cancel them with the initial part of E, but still have the second part damage and root hit them. And finally, his ultimate has two parts. Demonic Ascension is the first part. Swain will start generating demonic energy which is the red part under his health bar. During this time, Swain will drain enemies nearby, damaging them and healing himself each second. This ultimate will stay on as long as Swain can generate demonic energy out of enemies. Basically, if you have at least one enemy champion nearby, it will stay on the entire time. Only after 2 seconds of demonic ascension, can he then cast the next part of his ultimate, Demon Flare. Swain sends out a Nova of energy, damaging all champions in range and slowing them for 1.5 seconds, which decays. Demonic Ascension does amazing AoE, so use it when enemies are bunched up, before or during a teamfight. It can be great bait tool, having enemies believe they'll finish you off, only to heal up and then have them quickly regret their decision. It does heal from minions as well, but only 10% compared to champions. Still, we can use this during an all-in against our matchup for slightly more healing. It works even if you're CC'd or using items like Zonya's. Demon Flare Slow becomes a great tool to land our other three abilities. I'll go over this in combos and throughout this entire guide. As for ability order, you want to max Q first. It's essential to wave clear and because of its low cooldown, it will be your main damaging tool during fights as you'll be able to spam Q on a single or multiple enemies. You want to max W for the increased damage, the slow strength and lower cooldown. You'll want to max E last as it doesn't lower the cooldown and will be used mostly for utility so you can land your Q and W. Of course, level ultimate whenever you can, which is level 6, 11 and 16. As for which to take at level 1, you want E. The long range and AoE is great for early lanes and you can start healing and picking up some soul fragments every time you hit your laner. If your team decides to invade, it's an amazing tool to catch up one or even more enemies, recasting it to pull the enemy into your team. You want to take W level 2 against ranged champions and Q level 2 against melee champions. When it comes to major runes, there are three top runes to choose from, each with a specific goal. Conqueror and Phrase Rush for mid, bot carry and top lane and Electrocute for support. Conqueror is the most popular taken rune. It really synergizes well with Swain's kit, with the increase of damage the longer you're in combat, especially as you're able to spam Q and even auto attacks to activate the maximum Conqueror stacks of 12. Additionally, you've got the great healing from the max stacks, which is amazing on top of his healing passive and ultimate, helping you sustain in those fights where you're surrounded by multiple enemies. Phase Rush is especially taken to counter faster and mobile enemies, helping Swain catch up and position with the burst of movement speed after three separate attacks or abilities. When Swain's able to get into enemies' faces, he's able to dish out plenty of damage with Q spam. The movement speed also helps him stick to enemies while he's channeling his ultimate Demonic Ascension. Electrocute is the final top major rune specifically taken for bot lane as support. As a support, you'll be efficient in quick fast trades and Electrocute will help you deal extra damage. It's also great for all ins anytime you hit an EWQ combo. As for minor runes with Conqueror, 
you want to take presence of mind for the mana sustain, which will be especially important during the early game before you finish your lost chapter. Legend Tenacity is a second minor rune for the obvious resistance to CC enemy abilities that can either stop you from dealing damage and even prevent you from entering fights and sticking close to enemies. The final option is Last Stand. When you enter fights as Swain, you'll usually be surrounded by multiple enemies and therefore have a high chance of taking damage. We'll take advantage of this by gaining some extra damage at low HP. Remember you'll gain plenty of HP while you're fighting and even items like Zonya's Hourglass will allow you to stay low HP for a really long time. Phase Rush Minor Runes are pretty clear cut choices. Mana Flow Ban for the Mana Sustain, again very important for his early phase. Transcendence for some great ability haste and potential to really snowball fights after level 11 when he'll receive 20% reduced cooldown on enemy takedowns for his basic abilities. Your Q spam especially will be insane at this stage. Celerity is also worth considering if you want even more movement speed. And finally, take Gathering Storm for one of, if not the best scaling rune. This will really spike at 30 plus minutes. His passive plus this rune allows him to dominate the late game. Scorch is a minor rune worth mentioning if you want more early game pressure while poking. And finally, Electrocute as the final major rune choice specifically is for support. Pick up Cheap Shot, activated any time you land E, W or your ultimate Demon Flare. If you're after a bit of sustain against some heavy poke, take Taste of Blood. Eyeball Collection is the default best option for the second minor rune, helping you pick up some extra AP after takedowns, but Zombie Ward and Ghost Pourer are just as solid, especially if you want to prioritize vision control. Finally, take Ultimate Hunter to reduce the cooldown of your ultimate. Treasure Hunter is viable if you have an early game champion you are looking to snowball with, for example Draven. As for second page options, the most optimal choice for Conqueror, Phase Rush and Electrocute is from the Resolve Tree. A solid first choice is Conditioning for the flat and 5% bonus armor and MR after 12 minutes. The extra defensive stats will come in handy once you start joining skirmishes and teamfights. You could also take Bone Plating against champs that have bigger burst combos, especially for the laning phase. And the last options are quite close. Overgrowth will be even more passive HP you'll be gaining. This on top of your passive really adds up late game. And finally revitalize for the increased healing. This can come from multiple sources of Swain, his passive W, E and ultimate, as well as allies you have that can shield or heal you. There are some lanes you'll want to dominate and want to pressure vulnerable champions, for example Kassadin. You can take Biscuit Delivery and Time Warp Tonic combo and pick up Corrupting Potion as your starting item. This combination will allow you to spam abilities early and even your auto attacks will deal extra damage from the Corrupting Potion burn passive. Just keep in mind you will sacrifice those tanky stats from Resolve. You can even take Perfect Timing as an option over Time Warp Tonic, especially if you're building Zonya's Hourglass later on. As for starting items, Doran's Ring plus 2 health potions is the most common start, providing your basic needs early laning. Corrupting Potion is the best start when you've taken Biscuit Delivery and Time Warp Tonic runes, but it's still viable with other runes. Some early Bison components to keep in mind. Your Lost Chapter, the first main goal in laning phase is to purchase this. This will solve most of your mana issues early game and help you build into your Mythic. The Dark Seal, a solid quick buy, especially if you have to base with less than 400 gold. Doran's Ring, if you've picked up Corrupting Potion as your starting item, you can still get this Doran's Ring on top of that for a solid laning phase. A Stopwatch. This might be a game changing purchase, especially against champs like Zed or in an early team fight. This is great if you're building Zonya as Hourglass later on anyway. Boots of Speed. Pick these whenever you have the extra 300 gold or even prioritize it to dodge skill shots against heavy poke champions. Leandri's Anguish. This is the most optimal and popular mythic for Swain. The mana, AP power spike and damage over time supplies him with everything he needs to pop squishies and 1v1 tanky champions. Unfortunately, there's no tanky stats, but we'll make up for it with our legendary item choices. Zonya's Hourglass, one of the best playmaking as well as safest choices for Swain. This has amazing synergy with his ultimate and healing passive. Anytime you are low or in the middle of multiple enemies, Make sure to spam abilities and then hit Sonya's Hourglass active for complete safety. You'll deal damage and heal while enemies around you are burning. 
Demonic Embrace. Another damage over time item on top of Leandri's Anguish. You'll gain 2% of your bonus health as mobility power at this stage, which synergizes with most of the following legendaries. And you'll get a nice chunk of HP too from this. Rylice Crystal Scepter. Although Swain has a bunch of CC in his kit, the slow synergizes extremely well with his ultimate, specifically with the massive AoE. If enemies are ever hit with your other abilities, they will now have a low to zero chance to ever escape. Spirit Visage. The HP plus 25% increased healing will help you become unkillable in teamfights, especially against AP champs, since you're getting a chunk of MR from this. Morella Nomicon. A necessary item against heavy healing comps, something like Soraka or Vladimir. You can always just purchase the Oblivion Orb first and then finish this last. A Rabadon's Death Cap. Are you trying to snowball a game and after a bigger power spike? Pick up the ultimate AP item. Everything will now disintegrate in front of you. Void Staff. Although you deal plenty of percentage health damage from Leandri's Anguish and Demonic Embrace, sometimes it's just not enough, especially against MR stacking teams. Pick this up for the 45% magic penetration. Frozen Heart. Against the heavy AD comp, pick this up to reduce AD damage and attack speed of nearby enemies. Force of Nature. A viable choice against heavy AP comps. Just make sure you have enough damage on your team already. Boots. Sorcerer's Shoes are your first main choice for the movement speed and magic penetration, especially early game. However, you should consider two defensive boot options, especially when playing a close-up champ like Swain. Mercury Treads are your best bet against heavy AP and CC enemy comps. You already have some tenacity if you've chosen Conqueror from Legend Tenacity Rune, but this can be purchased on top of it if you really need it. Plated Steel Caps are the best against heavy AD and attack based champions. You can always stick to Sorcerer's Shoes if you just want damage and are the main carry on your team. As for Shards, Attack Speed is your first choice. This slightly helps you activate all three major runes faster. Take Adaptive as your second shard, then Armor or Magic Resistance if you're against AD or AP matchups respectively. As for Summoner Spells, Flash is by far one of the best choices on Swain. Combos, escapes, outplays, positioning, sniping enemies, etc. Just don't skip out on this. There is a specific situation in top lane which I'll mention later on in this guide. The next summoner spells are situational. Ignite, the default best second summoner spell. Increase your potential to kill your laner with true damage. You'll have a lot more pressure earlier in skirmishes. Also, healing reduction will be necessary to counter some champions. Teleport. A safer rune to help you out in tougher lanes. Heavy poke or faster pushes? Recall and teleport back to lane to stay even in gold and experience. Ghost. Good synergy with Swain's kit, especially his ultimate, as you'll be able to constantly stay close to enemies. Exhaust. Definitely worth taking against high burst threats, negating most of the damage for 3 seconds. Barrier. A bit more niche against long range champions you can't exhaust, but also great for baits. Enemies will think they have you killed until you use Barrier and start healing up from your passive and ultimate. Also, this counters Ignite. Cleanse. Against heavy CC comps, you might need this. Heal. Take this as a bot lane carry. With someone nearby, you'll heal yourself and your ally. Now let's go over ways to do optimal damage. 3-6 combos. The main trade combo. E1, W, E2, then Q. This is your bread and butter all game long. Master this and you'll be doing optimal damage with your three basic abilities. It might seem easy, but landing E will be the hardest part. Once E hits the enemy, place the W in front of them, then recast E to have them pulled in as close to the center of W as possible. This will give them the least chance to escape. Follow up with a Q and maybe auto attacks if you're in range. Some enemies with mobility can dash or even blink out of W, even if you land E, so you'll have to instantly cast W. Try to get an auto attack in. The catch out combo. Here's a useful combo to catch out enemies from further away. The strategy behind this is to either force enemies to get hit by W first, and when they are slowed, follow up with an easy E. However, most players will walk around the W. This opens up an opportunity to now go for an E towards the edge of W enemies have sidestepped towards. 
The worst case is the enemy is now forced to walk into you, which you can now use Q or engage with your ultimate. This is best used in tight areas of the map where enemies have little choices to maneuver. Ultimate combos. Full ultimate combo number one. E1, W, R, E2, Q, auto attack, R2. This combo starts with landing E, W, then ultimate. This is important to make sure mobile enemies are locked in while they are taking damage over time from your ultimate. Landing E first could also save you from wasting an ultimate. For example, if you miss your E against a mobile champ, simply just don't use your ultimate and try again later. If you were to use ultimate straight away against a mobile champ, you would pretty much spook them and they can simply just dash or blink away until your demonic energy bar has run out, pretty much wasting your ultimate entirely. By the way, after Demon Flare, you should keep spamming Q and following the enemy for as long as you can, making sure they are taking damage over time. Full ultimate combo number two, R1, Q, auto attack, R2, E1, W, E2, Q, and then auto attack. Against immobile champs, you can initiate with ultimate, so you have demon flare ready quicker. Once they are slowed from demon flare, it will be much easier to land an E. We're also taking advantage of the 20% cooldown reduction of E while demonic ascension is activated. Again, keep following the enemy so they're in your demonic ascension the entire time, spamming abilities as they come up. Even if you don't remember these two ultimates off by heart, just remember the important reason behind them. Your goal is to keep enemies as close to you as possible so they take as much damage from demonic ascension as possible, all while spamming your other abilities. With both these combos and depending on our items, you'll have potential to 1v2 or even take on more enemies. Flash combos. Q, flash. A quick and simple combo to finish off enemies using flash to close distance. Flash E. Not exactly an amazing combo by itself, but you should attempt it to catch an enemy further away, mostly if they are in a narrow area so they can't just simply sidestep it. As already mentioned, E is a very easy skill shot to dodge for most players, so it's best used on immobile champions. Just for clarity, E and then flash does not extend the range of E. E flash combo. You'll be able to use E, then flashing to reposition as the E is returning and catching enemies by surprise. This is great for those clutch moments where you need every ability to land. Massive AoE slow. R1, wait until your demon flare is almost up, then R2, flash. If you ever want to engage on multiple enemies, use this. Best used when the rest of your team can follow up. Look for opportunities when enemies are bunched up, like around Baron and Dragon Pits or areas in the jungle. A quick burst. R, wait a few seconds. R2, flash Q. This is great for a small burst of quick damage from Demon Flare and Q. Best to finish off enemies using flash to gap close. The closer you are, the more damage you can get from Q. This combo assumes you already have Demonic Ascension on, perhaps during a teamfight or skirmish, and now that two seconds have passed, you see an opportunity to quickly finish off an enemy further away with Demon Flare active and Q. Item combos. Zonya's Hourglass. You can either use any full ultimate combo or a May trade combo, then hit Zonya's Hourglass active. There isn't a truly optimal combo, as the Zonya's active is best used whenever you're at risk of dying or being hard CC'd for a long time. The worst case is hitting Zonya's while you're at full health and then having the enemies run away. The best case is you're about to die, but you're able to unload all your cooldowns, then enter the safety of Zonya's stasis while having your enemies burn and die around you, then come out alive. With a full ultimate combo, you'll be healing and damaging enemies nearby while in the Zonya's hourglass stasis. Early game. Invading with Swain is recommended, and you want to take E. It's quite a slow skill shot, so it's better as a follow-up CC after your teammate has landed theirs. If you end up having a level 1 teamfight, which is like a small 5v5 early game, Q is much better for the AoE damage and low cooldown at such an early level. Just make sure to auto attack as well during this time. You want to start E for most lanes, for the long range and chance to pick up soul fragments. 
start to auto attack minions as, as soon as possible, especially against champs with strong wave clear. You can take Q at level two against melee champs or W against ranged. You can look for E, W combos. To save mana, only use W if you land E, as well as W also having a big cooldown. At level three, go for E, W, Q combos. Look to all in most champs if you land two of these combos. Mana can be an issue if you start spamming E and W without it landing. Most of your mana problems will be over once you finish the lost chapter. Pushing in waves early will help you get to fights into the jungle and river quicker. You'll have priority in those important skirmishes with your jungler. You may want to freeze waves if you want to encourage ganks. Try to chain CC with your jungler. Unless you're confident you'll land E or W, let them use their CC first, then follow up. Once you're level six, you don't need to push in waves as much and can look to freeze next to your tower. Apart from encouraging jungle ganks when you're next to your tower, it also allows you to deal more damage in all-ins with the greater distance to chase enemies as they're far away from their tower. As already mentioned, the longer you're in a fight, the more damage you can output. Swain doesn't exactly have the best rooms. However, he does have pressure in the river, ward up and hang around areas other champs might look to roam and catch them out. You can even be on the lookout, whether it's bot or top or in the jungle, to help your team with a long range W or even try to snipe a low HP enemy. Skirmishes or teamfights around objectives like Herald or Dragon are perfect for Swain. There's more chance enemies will be bunched up, allowing you to deal AOE damage. Mid game, this is Swain's time to dominate. You'll usually have two to three AP items, which is more than enough to burst most squishies and even shred tanks. So be ready to catch enemies out. At this point, you should be looking to make picks with or without your team. A single pick can really open up the game, giving your team the advantage to take objectives. This is also the time where you'll have amazing potential to 1v2, even 1v3, especially if you camp a brush and CC an enemy before they even have time to react. Even if you take out two enemies and get killed, it will hopefully allow for the rest of your team to pick up objectives and farm around the map. Fights around the river, jungle, or epic monster pits are great for Swain. There is plenty of brushes and lack of vision to catch players out. Pick up a control ward and swap your trinket to sweeping wards for extra vision denial. Swain has strong sieging and dive potential, especially with items like Zonyas and Spirit Visage. Look to engage, spam all abilities, and then spam Zonyas when you are taking damage from enemies in the tower. Side laning is a great option if you're falling behind or you want some extra farm. You should be able to fight most enemies. Swain has greater potential to land abilities and deal more damage when he is being chased. Again, if you can attract two or more enemy players to deal with you, it might open up an opportunity for your team to take a dragon or even baron. Late game. A lot of the mid game still applies to late game with Swain. Most enemy team comps will have healing reduction at this point, so keep this in mind. Again, looking for picks is one of your strengths as a single pick with W or E can change an entire team fight and ultimately win you the game. Keep an eye on enemies who have flash or any important abilities on cooldown, as you'll have a greater chance to wipe them out early in a fight. Like most control majors, you'll have a much harder time one-shotting squishies as they'll be constantly grouped up and finish their survivability items. Again, fights around barons and elder dragons are great since there's a tight narrow areas and brushes to play around. Anytime you hit an E, look to start a fight and engage. Remember to finish off with Void Stuff if you're going to have any chance of chunking tanks who stack MR. However, if that's not a problem, you can just focus on more AP items. If your team is lacking a tank, just focus on more defensive items mentioned earlier, like Spirit Visage or Frozen Heart. You want to soak up pressure in some cases so the rest of your carries can output damage safely. Team Fighting Swain excels in team fight with plenty of AoE damage and CC. Chase down enemies, spam your Q, and look to land W and E on fleeing enemies. It's important to stay close enough to enemies so your ultimate is constantly generating demonic energy. However, just jumping straight into five enemies will most likely get you killed. This changes when you have your defensive items, especially Zonya's Hourglass. Look to burst or at least chunk enemies before a fight even starts. With one squishy dead, you'll now have a 5v4 advantage. Although not exactly easy to pull off, you want to aim your basic abilities whenever enemies are bunched for the AoE damage. Hitting three or more enemies can seriously turn most fights in your favor. Swain does a decent job of peeling, especially when you have a fed member on your team and you're slightly behind. Save your W, E, and Demon Flare for them. 
Some fights, you want to simply stay back until you've landed a W or E, as mobile enemies can simply just escape if you engage with your ultimate first. Swain does a solid job at cleaning up and finishing off low HP targets with your W and E. Zoning with your W can also prevent enemy carries from getting close for a few seconds. Simply place them in the tight areas so they are slowed if they walk through or they'll have to just stay out of the fight for the two seconds. If things turn bad quickly in a team fight, for example two of your carries get wiped out, just get out safely. Surviving allows you to wave clear and hopefully give your team a chance to stay in the game and perhaps win the next fight. So you're interested in learning Swain, but aren't sure if he's worth investing time on. Let's first go over strengths, basically reasons you want to play Swain over other champs. Then we'll cover weaknesses to consider and mention some quick solutions. Strengths, massive AOE. With every single ability dealing AOE damage, you'll do plenty of damage whenever enemies are bunched up. This also means he has great wave clear. Snowball potential. If you ever pick up two or more kills early on, you'll now have potential to 1v2 enemies. If they can't finish you off quickly enough, you'll be unkillable as you heal up using your passive and ultimate. Dominates teamfights. Leading on from the massive AoE strength is the ability to dominate teamfights. This is where Swain really shines. The more enemies nearby, the more damage and healing. Naturally tanky. With a passive that heals and permanently stacks HP over time, along with items that provide HP like Rylai's Crystal Scepter, Demonic Embrace, and even the defensive active from Zonya's Hourglass, you'll become another tank on your team, except you'll be a much bigger threat in terms of damage. Complete items like Spirit Visage, and you'll become unkillable. Solid CC. With CC from three of your abilities, with E technically having two types of CCs, which is a root and a pool, Swain will make picks and lock down enemies throughout the entire game. Weaknesses. Mana issues early on. One of the main issues you'll find early when playing Swain is that you'll go oom pretty quickly if you spam your abilities. If you're landing them consistently then that's no problem as you might even pick up a kill. Choose your moments carefully. Wait until enemies are about to last hit a minion before you throw your E. Only go for W if your E lands. Try not to spam Q early on the minion wave unless it's to finish off maybe two or more minions or you're going back to base anyway. If you still have mana problems early, check out the rune section for more options. Outranged. Although his W and E have decent range, he still needs to get pretty close to do the most damage from Q. Most mid lane mages will outrange you. Against those long range poke champs, make sure to pick up early boots when possible. Pick up runes for sustain. Even consider teleport as a summoner spell against long range champs as you'll be rarely close enough to use a summoner spell like Ignite. Skillshot Reliant. This is especially true with his E, which is fairly easy to dodge for most champions. There is an interesting quality to note about his E. Landing the root is actually easiest when enemies are the maximum range. Enemies in your face will actually have a much easier time dodging the second part of E, as it has to travel all the way back. Use the E flash combo if you need to reposition. Check out the tips and tricks mentioned earlier and combos to increase your chance to land these important abilities. Mobile Champs. Enemies with dash or blinks can prevent you from ever getting close. You'll be forced to go for W or E only when they have used their dash or blink. Items like Crystal Scepter could be useful as the slow will make it easier to land your long cast time abilities. Crow's Reveal. Although only a small issue, his crows will reveal your location anytime you land W from long range as enemies will be able to estimate your whereabouts depending on where the crows travel. This can even get you killed late game if you try to catch enemies in a dangerous area, especially around Baron or Dragon. There's no real solution to this, as it's essentially punishing you for landing a skill shot, but it's important to know it exists. Support. Again, most tips from this guide can be applied to the support role, but let's cover specific tips. Pick up the Electrocute Rune and start with Spell Thief's Edge. Poke consistently to proc your Spell Thieves Edge passive until you have 500 stacks to place wards. You'll then want to switch a ward trinket for sweeping lens. Pick up a control ward when you can as well. Look to poke enemies with E. Try to synergize with your ADC. If they have slows or hard CC, use it to land an EWQ combo. Use your W to check for enemy jungler ganks in the tri or river brush 
or see if the enemy bot lane has placed their control wards in the tri brush. Your main goal should be to pressure and poke enemies so your ADC can feel safe to walk up and CS. Even just walking back and forth can force enemies to back off, as they'll be anticipating your next E. At level 6, you want to initiate with an E, then ultimate. You should be the front line and let your ADC feel safe. Anytime your ADC is focused, look to use W, E and Demon Flare for peel. Join skirmishes around Dragon and River when possible. Remember with less gold and less experience, you'll be behind on items in general, unless you snowball the lane, so your ability to just go in and sustain will be a lot weaker. You can still go in pretty deep during teamfights, but only after another teammate has engaged. Bot Carry Basically follow this entire guide from builds to gameplay. You're pretty much a mid laner, except now you have a teammate in lane, and you'll usually be one level behind. You'll really dominate lanes with heavy CC champs like Alistar. Just time your CC after theirs, or you'll have the worst case happen, where Alistar may W headbutt enemies out of your W or E. This is the same with hook champs like Blitz and Thresh. Synergy is really important. Top lane. Most tips from this guide can be applied, but let's cover specific tips for top lane. Since you'll be against most melee matchups, you should look to start Q. Just like mid lane, Conqueror and Phase Rush are optimal runes to choose from. If you want damage and sustain, which is probably best against most top laners, take Conqueror. Otherwise, if they're squishy and mobile, for example you're up against a vein top, take Phase Rush for the chase potential. Teleport is best taken as your second summoner spell for the safety it provides to come back to recover from any bad trades or deaths, as well as the global pressure it has. Unleash teleport after 14 minutes will become critical when it comes to joining fights while you're split pushing. You can even take Ghost TP if you don't feel the need for flash. Ghost will help with the most important goal of staying close to enemies while your ultimate is active. Lanes will be way more punishing, and you have close to zero escapes. Unless you land W and E to peel enemies away, your chances of surviving are close to none. You'll also be a target for dives. Early stopwatches or picking up some defensive stats like plated steel caps against heavy AD could help sustain through a dive. Defensive runes from Resolve as your second page is recommended. Look to join skirmishes with your jungler when possible. Try to chain CC with your junglers and as always, it's best that they land theirs first as W and E are quite slow and easy to dodge. Take Herald with your jungler when there's an opening. At level 6 you're a much bigger threat and most of the lane vulnerabilities are gone. Even dives are risky for enemy teams. You should only look to teleport to Dragon if the enemy top laner has teleported down as well and you are confident you can win the fight. Otherwise, ping your teammates back and just take tower platings. An early Dragon is not worth risking the loss of multiple waves and tower platings. Be on the lookout to use your W to scout for junglers and on enemy mid laners. After the rework, Swain mid has come back to life and it feels just as strong as he once was. With great scaling and new mechanics on your E and ultimate, in my opinion, this has been a successful rework. If you like this guide or it helped you at any stage, I would really appreciate the like and subscription. Although I do enjoy making them, it takes quite a bit of time to put together. Any feedback is welcome, whether it's to do with this Swain guide or the guides in general. I'm Zeus, good luck in your ranked games and I'll see you in the next guide.